MX-5 sports car aside, Mazda has a fine record of building what are nearly the best cars in their class. Nearly that is, but not quite. So the Mazda 6 is nearly as good as a Ford Mondeo, the Mazda 3 nearly matches a VW Golf and the CX-5 is nearly the best SUV. Question is, with this new 2, has Mazda finally cracked it and built the best car in its segment? Well, if we start with space, then we have to say probably not because this boot's actually slightly smaller than a Ford Fiesta's. So it's not surprising that with our baby buggy test, we have to take a wheel off to get it in. I know I'm always banging on about this, but if you have a small child and lots of people that buy these cars do, it does get pretty irritating because you're doing it 10, 20 times a week. Other issues with this boot. This is quite narrow the opening here and also there's a big sill plus if we take the parcel shelf out then by the magic of some cutaways you will see that you don't get a completely flat floor when you fold these rear seats climbing in the back first thing to note these door openings are quite narrow uh, and then once I'm here space is acceptable rather than exceptional I'd say this seat is adjusted for me I'm just under six foot and as you can see my knees are just about brushing the back of the seats headroom's fine uh, you can fit three across here but it's going to be a squeeze also you can fit your rear facing child seat in here with isofix mounting points but it's going to be a squeeze for whoever's sitting in front so far so average but things do improve once you get into the front You might initially dismiss this as another Japanese car with a slightly hard, slightly scratchy plastic interior, but actually when you look a bit closer, you'll realize that these buttons are really nicely finished. The heat controls are very clear. The materials on the steering wheel, the gear lever, they all feel very nice and premium. You also get adjustable reach and height on the steering wheel and seat, although I have to say I could do the seat dropping a little bit lower, ideally. Um, and also on SEL spec cars, which is the one we'd recommend, you get this seven inch touchscreen. I say touchscreen, you also get a rotary controller down here. So you use a combination of the two to control it. It's really good actually, it's really responsive. Uh, we're impressed. Now, you can have your Mazda 2 with a diesel engine, but in a small car like this, unless you do a lot of miles, it's not really worth it. Instead, we'll focus on the one and a half litre petrol engine, which is available in three power outputs. This is the middle range one, it's 90 horsepower. And in this car, it's matched to a very nice five speed manual gearbox. Now, unlike Ford and Vauxhall and the VW Group, Mazda doesn't do a small three cylinder turbocharged engine. And that's because it says actually a bigger four cylinder engine is ultimately more efficient in real world driving. It does, however, mean that you do really need to rev it in order to make good progress. And I mean, it's fine as long as you're happy to drive in that way. It's a fairly nippy little car. It does get a little bit strained at the top of the rev range and you do sometimes miss that instant punch that you get from a turbocharged engine. Unlike some of those tiny turbocharged engines, Ford EcoBoost, we are looking at you, those claimed fuel economy figures are actually fairly accurate as well. We've been getting 50 miles to the gallon out of this car, which is pretty good, it has to be said, because we haven't been taking it all that easy either. For the most part, this is a really fun little car to drive, and it's only when you really start to push it do you realise it's not quite as good as a Ford Fiesta. But it's still a cut above rivals, no doubt about that. And the steering, although it's quite light, actually has a bit of feel to it, which is really nice. And because the car only weighs a thousand kilos, there's a good sense of agility, which you just miss out on on a lot of rivals. Plus it's small, visibility is generally pretty good, so it's nice and easy to drive in town, and of course, easy to park.
seemed like just five minutes ago that I was comparing the Skoda Fabia with the Ford Fiesta to see which was the king of small cars. On that day, we concluded that with more space and a smoother ride, the Fabia was the better car for most people. Although, if you value driving fun, go for the Fiesta. What about this Mazda then? Well, it's certainly not as big as the Fabia, nor is it as much fun to drive as the Fiesta. However, it does have the best interior of the three and the running costs are going to be very reasonable. Plus at 14,000 pounds for this SEL spec car, it's bang on the money. Mazda hasn't built the best car in its class. It still hasn't quite achieved that goal. But this too is a really great little car and well worth going on your shortlist. If you like the sound of this Mazda, you can read a full detailed review of it by clicking here to go to the Telegraph Cars website. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking down here.